Maniacs. We've been wanting to do this interview for quite some time now, but there's about 500 miles that separates us. So here we are today with Robert Wilson, and uh, we're gonna hear his story, and we're gonna talk about his latest creation, the Outlaw Notch. We go way back. We go back, we go back 35 years, believe it or not. So we got quite a bit, quite a bit of history, but we'll talk about that in a little bit. So let's go ahead and talk about the, uh, the Outlaw Notch, what it is, how it became to be, and uh, where it's gonna go from here. Why don't you let us know, first of all, what is the Outlaw Notch? Yeah, yeah, it's a 64 Volkswagen Notchback. Bought it just about a year ago from now. I think you got to see it. Uh, the initial build was five months that we had to build it for the SEMA show to debut it in the Optima batteries booth, but bought it as a bare metal shell and a bunch of parts in different boxes and uh, got to it. It's kind of a culmination of three different 64 notchbacks that I had bought and uh, kind of learned a little bit and played around with them, sold the other two and put all my eggs into this one. So tell us a little bit more about what a notchback is because I, I have a feeling that a lot of people never even heard of a notchback. Yeah, they're kind of rare, especially here in the US. It's a type three Volkswagen um, and type three consists of the notchback, the square back and the fastback. The notchback was never sold in the US. It was only imported where the fastback and the square back were sold here in dealerships. So you get to see those a little bit more. Even those are, you know, it's still getting, you know, hard to see any of those. So the so the square back is like a wagon form. Kind of like a station wagon. Fastback um, is kind of what it's called. It's a two door and it has a fastback. The notchback is a little two door sedan, let's say. Yeah. And um, kind of has a unique look to it. Um, even Volkswagen people don't know that's a Volkswagen. And the, and the Outlaw notch, I, I purposely debadged all the Volkswagen just to have a little bit more of a conversation piece, knowing that people weren't going to know what it was. And so it's always fun to kind of sit back and listen to people and they think it's a BMW or an older Volvo or something like that. And uh, so it kind of makes it fun. So, I mean, what, what inspired you to do this thing? Is this something that you like always wanted to build? You know, where did, you know, where did the idea come from? Mm, I don't know, you know, I, I mean, you know me, I'm a custom guy, I build anything. Um, but back in high school, I think my, my, this is only my second Volkswagen I ever had. I had a Bug back in high school. You know, it was actually my first magazine car. And so I always liked the Volkswagens, but we got into mini trucking and trucking and then the import scene. Um, but the notchback was always cool. I think the same thing, just because it was pretty rare and you hardly ever seen it. So I like the style. So ever since I was in high school, I always thought the notchback would be a kind of cool project. And kind of through the years of building and buying and selling different car, you know, cars, it came to the point where I sold an older Mustang and said, all right, it's, it's time to do an air-cooled Volkswagen and started looking for the notchback and was having a really hard time. I mean, really, it was a, about six months of really looking for cars, really hard to find one anyways, and if you do find them now, they're totally rusted out and didn't want to go for that. And uh, so found, found my first one, it was all primer, great, great drivetrain, wasn't quite the car, bought another one, ended up transplanting and switching that drivetrain into that car. Now that car became too nice to cut up and then ended up finding the third car. And what's crazy is that all three of the cars were within a half an hour of my house. Wow, so hard, really to cool. find a, hard to find a notchback anyways, and I found 364 push button, which is even harder to find all within that time frame around my house. But then again, your house is in Huntington Beach. Yeah, so we're, I mean, it's kind the, of a Huntington yeah, Beach kind of, of car. Mecca. Yeah, totally. It's a total right, beach so. car. And, uh, you know, Orange County, LA County is, is, is a big hotbed for the air cool Volkswagen scene. I remember seeing that thing when you first bought it. It was literally a shell. It was bare metal. Somebody already started it. And like you said, it was a couple of uh, crates of, of parts. And then you just kind of took it from there. Yeah, which was perfect for me. It worked out really good for me both ways because people were so scared of it um, because it was just bare metal and it wasn't 
put together, for me, I was going to do that anyway. So that guy saved me so much time and time was so limited at that point. Again, five months to do a complete build and debut it at SEMA was a, was a big undertaking. How did you end up deciding on the color, the color combo and just, you know, where did, you know, was that kind of the initial concept in your mind before all the rest of the pieces started to come together? No, I think um, I, I, I knew what I wanted. I mean, I think one of the things that we have kind of going for us is that we can picture the car done before we even start. You know, we, and we have the idea, so that helps. So I knew I wanted classic Volkswagen lines on the outside, but with a bit of race inspiration, just because that's kind of where I come from and um, some of the stuff I did. So I wanted to stay true to the air cool Volkswagen because I was an outsider coming in to this market, right? I mean, the air cool Volkswagen market's pretty hardcore, guys. Uh, so I was always had that in the back of my head and just wondering like, man, these guys are gonna hate on me and just give me so much crap. And they've actually been really cool, helped me throughout the build. So I think you did a really good job with trying to balance that, keeping the VW true to the VW scene and yet, you know, get that race inspiration in there. Yeah. So I think some it was really difficult. good components. It really difficult too. One of the things I mean for sure I wanted to put a Subaru turbocharged motor into it and a couple things came apparent right off of the bat I wasn't gonna have enough time I wasn't gonna have enough money so I, I stayed with the type 3 Volkswagen motor the stock motor even though we punched out 2054 and I'm so glad that I did that because that was the number one thing at SEMA when people came to it and even though it has a cage it has all this aluminum work all this kind of techie stuff People were so stoked that the body looked pretty original. It has, it has custom touches, but more than anything, they were really happy that I left the motor in it. And I think now, especially the way that we did the motor, we kind of detailed it, made it real minimalistic. I'm really pumped that I, I left it. Getting it off the ground, you got the color selection, you, you started to think about wheels and you obviously did something really special when it came to the wheels. Instead of just picking some stuff off the shelf, you went ahead and uh, did some design yeah. work from yeah, scratch. Yeah, really cool. You know, longtime friend from Mini Truck and uh, Rodney has a company called Evo 61. Always knew he had, you know, his own wheel company and, and connections into the custom wheel design. Um, it, it was somewhat forced because we wanted to run 17s, we wanted to run big brakes. We wanted to make sure the wheel was where it was going to be in the stance. So it really, it, it kind of forced us to build our own wheel. Um, at the at the beginning of the project, I wasn't going to. Um, I was going to run a set of empty wheels and power coat them black and, and be totally fine. You know, quite a few thousand dollars later, um, I ended up here. But again, it's just another one. The four corners of the car, is, it's makes such an impact from the custom brakes to those wheels. So those wheels are three piece forged you know, wheels, um, Cerakoted and painted. Um, they have 20 exposed bolts and 20 blind bolts on them. So there's so much going on. It's, it's a wide five wheel, which again, had I just gone to the Porsche pattern, which a lot of the air cool Volkswagens, they do, they just go to Porsche pattern because it's popular and you can buy wheels off the shelf with it. But same thing, holding, holding true to that Volkswagen heritage, I wanted that wide five that 5205 bolt pattern. You so you, know? got, you got a and couple of wins right there already. With yeah, the yeah, and, and same thing. So the guys that know it, um, they know how difficult our, you know, time consuming and, and pocketbook consuming that is. Let's talk about some of the challenges on this car. I, I'd like to hear what was the biggest challenge? The paint, I'll stop you right there. <laughs> it always is. That, that was not, it didn't take you very long to think about that one. Yeah, I don't have to think very long. Absolutely, the paint is, uh, for me, being a custom builder, for however long I've been, it's, it's always the issue. And this one, it, it came pretty hard. You were there at the last minute, you know, and you, you got to see, and people kind of following the build got, got to see that, you know, within days of the car supposed to be in, at the show, there were still parts coming from the painter and the car was, I mean, literally a shell, yeah. you know, within, uh, you know, a few days. So pretty, pretty miraculous and so thankful that you came down and so many other people pitched in to just to be able to make it to the show. Would you say that out of all the cars that you built and you had these crazy time crunch, you know, lines to get the SEMA, was this the one that cut it the closest? I wouldn't say, it's, you know, it was pretty gnarly when I had Modern Image and doing five cars that had to go and run the business. You had Ballistic Unlimited, you're building multiple Three cars. cars. Yeah. So in that sense, I think I probably cut it closer, but on this, you know, a little bit rusty, 
Um, it had been four years, I think, since I built a car that was going to SEMA. Uh, so, I, you know, like I said, I, I don't know if I was completely, the mindset was right, and I did this out of the house, out of the garage. And I, I kind of think that, I mean, this was a pretty elaborate, because it was a complete, you know, from bare metal, completely apart, you know, having to reassemble it, had a bunch of custom stuff, all the interior pieces, all the custom fab steel, you know, interior and the cage, and all that assembly, you know, just so much. Because even when we had the five cars, they were a little easier cars, you know? Little... Well, and, the, and then the thing with this too is that, I mean, we'll do any car, it doesn't matter. I mean, cars, carts, nuts, and bolts, it's with panels, but the thing with this is I never done one before and it came in boxes. So where does this screw go? How does that wind wing, you know, and the whole door come apart and get, you know, rebuilt and, and be built now? That was kind of the challenge. And again, like I said, there's some guys that didn't know me only through Instagram that I kind of reached out to them. We, we DM back and forth that were, you know, Volkswagen guys that not, I now look up to, you know, and borrowed ideas from and stuff that, you know, I could, I could DM or call them and ask them a question and every time they picked up. Yeah, that's really cool. You know, the, the car industry is just such a cool, tight, tight-knit industry, you know, and everybody really just helps each other out and I think that's kind of prevalent in this situation. Yeah, so even when you came over, you know, I mean, how many hours did you spend on the doors, you know, and but she's the doors. Just a silly little molding. The, the doors were probably one of the hardest part about the whole build. If you think about almost all the fab and everything that we did, I think if we go back, especially that week leading in the SEMA, those doors were probably the, the gnarliest thing. Yeah. You know, and I think that the end result, I mean, it's just obviously puts a smile on your face every time you look at it. You know, it puts a smile on everybody's face, you know, walking up to that thing and that satisfaction that you get is, I think what I would like to just get across to, you know, our viewers, you know, some of you guys are younger out there, maybe you haven't built anything yet, maybe you're thinking about something, or maybe you're, you know, seasoned veteran and uh, you have a car in your garage that you haven't touched in a long time because life gets in the way, but, you know, I just, I just hope that, you know, this story with Robert and, and the notchback just inspires you guys to, to get out there and, and get on it, you know, and it's just, you know, one bolt at a time and, you know, hopefully you don't have a, a SEMA crunch, you know, five months to get it done, because that does put a lot of stress on it. But, you know, I, that that's really what I'd like you guys to take away on that. I wanted to talk a little bit about our background. So, you know, moving on from the notch, you know, that's, that's one and one in his belt, you know, but that's funny, a notch in the belt. <laughs> <laughs> that's scripted. Robert and I met, I think he was 15, I was 16, we were in high school. Um, I went to this uh, car club meeting and he was driving a Datsun 620, super slammed. I don't even think, well, he didn't have his license yet because he wasn't even old enough, but he was driving it. And uh, the thing was so slammed, no airbags back then, you know, hydraulics were kind of crude still. So later on had hydraulics, but at that time it was just static and it was super slammed. Like I, I want to say it was like an inch to two inch, maybe off the ground and it would just get stuck on speed bumps. You had to teeter-totter and like rock them off of it and push them off of it, you know? So some fun times for sure. We were in a couple of car clubs, truck clubs together. And, you know, I, I wanna bring up the, uh, a few of the notable ones. Uh, one of them was a, uh, it's a Nissan 720, right? Yeah. A Nissan 720. And uh, he decided to uh, tandem axle the truck. It was kind of a thing, you know, late 80s early 90s, and so he tandem axled this uh, Nissan 720. It was cut convertible, and we like together kind of figured out the Lambo doors. First we like put together PVC pipes to like do this hinging mechanism and ended up getting done in metal later, but that was pretty sweet. And then uh, I remember your Blazer. That was a really wild ride. What did you have on that the wheels? I mean, you were pushing back then, you know, you're pushing the envelope on every one of these builds, you know? They're probably like 17s at the time. It's like the biggest they'd go. I mean, all like Villa wheels and... And, and then had a really cool uh, C10, the blue C10 with the Dalmatian print interior. Still one of my favorites. That, that thing had 20s on it at that point. And again, it was like just 20s were just coming out. And, and then of course, you know, uh, he, uh, he actually owned Modern Image, uh, which ended up doing uh, graphics on the Fast and the Furious cars. 
the first, you know, was it first one, second one? Yeah, but we were going into the third one as I sold it, and uh, yeah. And so, uh, some cool cars there. A lot of lot of history in the tuner scene, kind of grassroots tuner uh, stuff, drag import drag racing. And uh, so, yeah, this guy's touched like every kind of car out there. He's not partial. It's really cool, you know. And. Uh, He's just been an inspiration to me, you know? So we've been best friends this whole time and, you know, he drives me and uh, we bounce off each other and it's just really, a, really a cool relationship. And, you know, I really appreciate you, man, you know, and you've helped, I mean, and right now with the 49. Oh man. Woo, the Born Again 49. He is, uh, so, you know, and I've been out of the industry for like 15 years right now. So we're just coming back with this 49 Ford and Robert's been just helping me on that, you know, just uh, with connections and, uh, and even just, you know, again, bouncing ideas on, on various things, collars and fitment and things like that. So anyway, man, it's really cool being out here. It's nice that we were able to come down to Huntington Beach, hang out, you know, do this little interview with you. Thanks for, uh, you know, watching our, uh, our build on the 49 Ford. Uh, thanks for watching this, uh, this uh, what is this? It's not a montage, it's not a clip. It's uh, this uh, segment, uh, it's, you know, we call it story time. We appreciate you guys, you know, make sure you subscribe and share it like thumbs up you know all those good things and we're gonna keep trying to bring you some good content so see you guys later